Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Keeping it free, .blogspot.com, a free site. It's Super Bowl Sunday. I feel compelled to make this video because of the excellent, and I do mean excellent, documentary, We Need to Talk About Cosby by W. Kamal Bell. Kamal is spelled K-A-M-A-U. I want to encourage everyone to look at this documentary. It's very well done. I give it my highest rating. It poses a provocative question, right? And that question is, what do you think about Bill Cosby? Who was he? Right now, let me just say, I'm going to use a lot of phrases in this video, like I believe, I think, so that I can have an opinion defense if anyone ever decides to sue me. Understand everything in this video is really my opinion. Right? It's my opinion. I own the opinion. It's mine. I'm sharing it with you. Now, first, let me just say, and I was raised when Bill Cosby was highly thought of, right? In the 1970s, I was a big Fat Albert fan. In the 1980s, I remember when the Cosby Show was a major weekly event on television. But let's be blunt here. I believe the women. I believe Bill Cosby was a serial rapist. Let's turn the question on its head. What serial rapist do you know of? where being a serial rapist wasn't the centerpiece of that person's life, right? Is there any serial rapist in history where you believe that the guy actually had something else going on, where the rest of his life wasn't a construct to facilitate his serial raping, right? Understand, with most people who are doing terrible crimes, right? Take Ted Bundy, um, serial murderer. You never really think hard about what the guy did for a living because you understand that the serial murdering, the serial killing was really the main part of his life. You know, it's time we come to grips with the fact that at least 60, six zero, at least 60 women have come forward and have said that they were sexually assaulted by Bill Cosby. You and I know that if 60 women came forward, I would say that the number is probably three or four times that in terms of the number of women who Cosby sexually assaulted. Isn't the answer to the question, who is Bill Cosby, that he's a serial rapist? period, right? You know the phrase, are you someone who lives to work or are you someone who works to live? I believe it's clear that Cosby worked to live. Everything he's doing, in my opinion, right? I'm telling you what I think. Everything he's doing is to facilitate the centerpiece of his life, his sexual fetish. And let's be clear on what I believe that is, based on what I've read about the women 
alleging that Cosby sexually assaulted them. Cosby's sexual fetish, in my opinion, based on what I've heard, is that he wanted to have sex with unconscious and semi-conscious women. Let me repeat that. I believe Cosby's fetish, the driving force for his life, given that at least 60 women have come forward and have said that Cosby sexually assaulted them. The driving force for his life is that he wanted to have sex with unconscious and semi-conscious women. Right? This is a sexual predator who enables that lifestyle by being a comedian. He's working as a comedian so that he can fulfill the sexual fetish. Let's talk about the M.O., right? According to the people who have accused him, who I believe, right? And understand, let me be clear here. I believe all of them. Understand the time period, too. From the 60s, from the 1960s, Bill Cosby was engaging in behavior like this, according to his accusers. He invites, either through staff or personally, women to his dressing room or his hotel room. Right? I believe there's even instances where he invites a woman to his house under the guise of helping her with some challenge. Right, The challenge could be her career. The challenge could be some problem she's having. Right? Woman shows up. She's meeting Bill Cosby. Maybe she even knows Bill Cosby. Cosby offers her some pills under the guise of helping her relax. Right? There are times when Cosby doesn't offer pills, where Cosby actually mixes a drink and offers the woman the drink saying that, hey, you need to relax a little bit. If the woman looks too alert after the first pill or drink, Cosby would offer her a second. Now, as the drugs, either in the pill or the drink, start to take effect, and the room starts to sway a bit, or starts to get smaller, or starts to spin, that's when Cosby would quietly put a guiding hand on the woman's shoulder. He would either lean her back on the sofa or he would guide her to a more private room, let's say the bedroom. From there, the sexual assault would take place. Now, really, at this point, it's not even about Cosby. There's so many women who have accused Cosby of sexual assault and the similarities in their stories is so consistent that I believe you have to discount the disbelievers. Right? There are people out there who say, oh, I thought these women were lying. What planet are they from? Let's be clear here, too. A woman who was sexually assaulted by Cosby when she was 18, 19, and 20. And let's say 1968, 69, 1970. Right? Is there anyone watching this video who believes that after years of being private, of non-disclosure, that woman who would now be in her late 60s, early 70s, 
who may now actually have not only kids, but grandchildren, that that woman would decide to make up a fake story, inject herself into the public dialogue, by lying about a sexual encounter with Bill Cosby. I don't believe that. I believe there's so many accusers, so many accusers over the years that I just don't believe the people who don't believe any of them are credible. I don't believe Bill Cosby's denials to the extent he's made denials. Right, so at this point, this story becomes less about Bill Cosby than it becomes about us. Right, in other words, when a rapist has raped dozens of people, literally, Right, dozens of people, when dozens of people are coming forward and saying, I was raped by this individual, then to me the question becomes, how were we fooled? Right, understand, this is an atrocity. So at this point, just like with the other serial people, right, just like in looking at the Ted Bundy legacy. At some point, we have to say, hey, how were we fooled by this guy? I believe that's the question we need to ask ourselves about Bill Cosby. And I believe we're fooled because Cosby has a construct going. Right? I believe Cosby is working to live. He understands that to get people to trust him to the point where they're going to his hotel room. He has to look credible. He has to be a celebrity. So when Cosby is giving out drugs to women, right? Andrea Constant, other women. When Cosby has a woman in his hotel room or his dressing room, and he's saying things like, hey, and they're rehearsed lines, in my opinion. Things like, hey, you look a little uptight. Take these. While at the same time, making albums, warning kids about the danger of drugs. In my opinion, one has to question. One should question whether or not Cosby's even anti-drug. Folks, the number of victims this guy caused, the number of women this guy sexually assaulted shows me that this is a lifestyle. This is a guy who sees a woman show up on the set of The Cosby Show, doesn't know her, has never met her, hasn't seen her act in anything because she has no acting experience or very little acting experience. Then, of course, somehow the woman's agent hears that she's just gotten a part on one of the top-rated shows in the United States, The Cosby Show, as a policeman, right? This is off of W. Kamau Bell's documentary. The woman is on it. So, of course, she shows up, and then someone comes by and says, hey, Bill would like to meet you in his dressing room. The first day, Bill doesn't show up to his own dressing room. The next day, Bill does. And, of course, the woman and Bill have a conversation. The woman is a model, high self-esteem. She's not going to take pills. She's not interested in taking whatever Bill's offering. Bill tells her, hey, you can have anything in the world. You know what's going on here. Right? Bill comes up behind her. Bill grabs her. The woman is able to leave. Right? Understand, Bill is picking his victims 
quickly. They include women he just sees for a moment, who he finds attractive. Suddenly they're getting invites into his dressing room. On the Kamau Bell show, they show you people actually involved in the Cosby show who didn't have dressing rooms. This woman, who Cosby just saw the day before, ends up with her own dressing room. Right? The question is, is Bill Cosby the public figure who's pushing an anti-drug message? Is he doing so to keep people off drugs, or is he doing so in furtherance of putting himself in a position where he could fulfill his fetish? That's the question we should be asking ourselves. The reason we're fooled is because of the construct he's constructed. Right? You see, Bill, you see the public persona, right? He's self-deprecating. He's the guy who can make children's shows and talk about jello pudding and everyone's comfortable around him. He looks like he cares about kids. Right? He looks very empathetic. We see him dealing with Theo on The Cosby Show, and he looks like the parent you want to have. Right? He can look Theo in the eyes. It's acting, folks, but he can look Theo in the eyes. He looks like he's interested in what Theo has to say. There's a rapport. You're thinking, wow, what a great dad. You see him with Lisa Bonet. You see him with other kids. He looks like the parent who wants to guide them in the right direction the whole time. According to the accusers, he is sexually assaulting people during the time periods, right? Not every minute of the day, but during the time periods. And so why does he have us fooled? It's because we keep being distracted by the persona, right? There's little difference between Bill Cosby and Harvey Weinstein, in my opinion, right? They're inviting you back to their hotel rooms. There's some guys that you're going there to talk about a movie role or to talk with them about your career, to try to get a job from them, to try to meet people through them. And then, of course, when you're there, you find out that the person is a longstanding predator. Right? In Bill's case, because his fetish involves sex with women who are either unconscious or semi-conscious. And understand, on the Kamau Bell show, you have some women who wake up naked. They feel penetrated, but they don't know if it happened. Right, folks, that's all by design. The drugs, date rape type drug, knocks out your memory. Right, what's clear is that someone who's unconscious or semi-conscious could not have consented to sex. So Bill had us fooled. Just like Ted Bundy was a law student and he's supposed to be interested in politics and stuff like that, when you know his real reason for going places and coming up with a cast, pretending he's a cop, was so he could get women alone to kill them. Right here, we have Bill Cosby, the comedian, who's also the socially conscious person urging kids not to use drugs, who is fulfilling his fetish, the real centerpiece of his life, in my opinion, of having sex with unconscious or semi-conscious women. Okay, obviously something's going on outside where I am. Let me hear from you. The answer to the question of who is Bill Cosby, I would say he's a serial rapist.
period. Right? If pushed, I would say he's a serial rapist who had a comedian construct. The fact that he's a skilled comedian, the fact that Jerry Seinfeld believes that of all the comedians he knows of, Bill Cosby has the best body of work. The fact that we can look at concert films and laugh at some of the jokes shouldn't hide the fact that the guy was, in my opinion, doing all that so that he would have the social latitude to have sex, well, first lure, and then have sex with unconscious or semi-conscious women. Now, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Make no mistake, too. This guy hurt a lot of people. Right? Don't make it an abstraction. I believe this guy raped dozens of women. I don't think we know the full number. Right? We only know of the women who've come forward. We don't know of the women who did it. Right? Let me also say, too, that Cosby over the years did have some girlfriends, right? Consensual relationships with some women, right? Obviously, he's married to Camille, but Cosby, according to reputation, had a roving eye. He did have some relationships with some women. But this is a unique subset. No woman that Cosby had a consensual relationship that I know of has come forward to say, hey, we role played. Where he wanted me to pretend I was unconscious or semi-conscious. Or we role played. Where I took a quaalude or some drug that would make me unconscious or semi-conscious consensually as part of the consensual experience. No, this is a subset of Cosby's se sexual appetite. Right? Unconscious and semi-conscious women who he was not having a relationship with. Folks, dozens have come forward. Right? I believe this is a tragedy unless you're someone who hears about a serial rapist and who then thinks that, you know, in discussing the guy in the first sentence, who then thinks, oh, Bob was a mailman who was a serial rapist. Right? Understand, when you have someone who has this number of victims, who has this M.O., and it involves clear premeditation, right? Persons lured to Cosby's room. Cosby has drugs ready. Or a drink ready that he mixes. Right? He gives it to the woman. Then the woman, and there's more than one, much more than one, wakes up naked in a bed she doesn't recall getting in. Folks, that's all premeditated. That's a modus operandi, right? I would argue that fulfilling this sexual fetish was the centerpiece of Cosby's life. I understand he's a father, he's a husband, he's a comedian. Folks, all of that facilitated this. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.